So then, the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs are set, the 7500 is over, and I'm finally getting down to sit down and record my review. It's hard to condense a four hour race into something that you can easily digest and something that you can easily interpret especially when there's so much on the line so quickly going to go through the winner the upsets and the playoff picture because my next video is going to be reactions to my preseason predictions some of which are very bad and yeah then I'm going to predict my playoffs and let's start off the winner then Chase Briscoe, who will be moving across to the 19 next season because SHR is shutting down. You'll have the house factory team with one car. It's great to see the 14 get back to victory lane. It's great for Chase Briscoe to get it. It's great for Stuart Haas to get into the playoffs in their, um, in their farewell season. I heard some commentators describe this as almost a kind of lame duck thing. Because, well, they are on the way out anyway. But, I don't know. I can see why people are saying that. But, I also think it's a nice little swan song, right? I, I prefer to use that term. It's great to see that he was able to win his way in. And holding off Paul Bush. Well, <laughs> somebody knows how to do that at Darlington quite well, eh? It's proof that um, JGR have gotten a good guy into their car. I mean, Briscoe has always been good. His social media presence is fantastic. And it's proof that the winner you're in can benefit people who just are down on their luck. At the same time, there are some bits and pieces where it can be really different. But Briscoe was just at that level the entire night. Kyle Busch was as well. And part of me does hope that Rowdy keeps his winning streak, well, his year long winning streak going. Because that would be awesome. Getting it up to two decades would be just fantastic. But. He got so close. That RCR team have picked up since the Olympic break. They must have found something in that time. Because regardless of the ending of Richmond, <laughs> Austin Dillon had a bloody great pace. Carl Busch has been not back to his peak, but he's been in good form since that crash out at Indy. He was running well late at Indy. But Briscoe deserved it. SHR deserved to get into playoffs. And that, that, that much is true. Because I was thinking about this. The actual playoff grid has more Fords than any other car. And Ford was struggling to get that Dark Horse Mustang up and running. And ironically or fittingly, however you want to see it, it has proven to be a bit of a Dark Horse. It wasn't really expected to do particularly well. But you have Ryan Blaney, you have Brad Keselowski, you've got Joey Logano, Austin Sindrick, you've got Chase Briscoe, you've got Harrison Burton. We'll make it in. Six Fords out of the 16. The other five, um, well the other ten of five and five split, aren't they, between Chevy and Toyota. With one main team and then one smaller team. Hendrick, JGR, track house 2311 I think you go to 2311 to find the first upset Bubba Wallace now he had his work cut out for him especially after what happened in Michigan like Michigan was the moment where I was like ah oh, this isn't gonna end well he was very close to pointing his way in and so was Chris Busher they just run lucky that we had two new winners in the final two races. 
because if it hadn't been for that, they both would have gotten in. Another Wallace got polar, darling. And now, Busher ran well in the stages, and that helped almost secure him. He did lock in Gibbs and Truax. But, yeah, you feel for them, you feel for Ross Chastain, who he just hasn't had it this season, has he? I mean, he got a top five again, but it's, what, his fourth top five on the year? Which sounds so bizarre to say. Especially given that his teammate is going to play off the 11th seed. Yet has only gotten two top fives in the year. But Busher was pushing. And he's been consistent. This is the detriment to the win in your end because I think Harrison Burson was still. Did he end up being outside the 30? Outside the top 30 in points? I know it used to be a rule you had to be in the top 30 to get into playoffs, but. Now it's not. Which isn't the end of the world. Let's make that clear. It's not the end of the world. But it does lead to people being annoyed at the playoff system. I mean, I find it interesting. I think if you need to manufacture the, that kind of postseason to make it so that people are going to tune in every week towards the end of the season, maybe a season's a little too long. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.